China. Welcome. We're here after three years. Well, finally, after almost three years of working on what is essentially the last event that we should have had two years ago of the Bawa 100 yes. event, we now have it's essential to be there. The title comes from a quote by Bawa on this idea of having to be at a site, to be there in order to design. And of course the story begins with this beautiful letter about Jeffrey deciding on a there yes. and that that there would finally be Sri Lanka. This I think is interesting because we are looking at a there which was, was never there and would never be there. But it was sort of doodling with a little cardboard model. And then Jeffrey suddenly saying, oh, let's have this made of metal. And I think it, it tells the whole story of moving through, of looking out, of selected views. It's got all of that in this one maquette. So now we're in the second gallery of the show called Situating a Practice. And this is really a place where we're looking at that most immediate topographic investigation of site. And we have four projects in this um, in this gallery, we each look at a different part of the island, a different kind of site. Um, the first is the Ina de Silva house, which is an urban site. Here you begin to see that architecture was not just about making buildings, they were really about making a lifestyle. And you see every little detail of what was imagined as Ina de Silva's lifestyle, of her batik hangings her uh, and, and her little tortoise and the collections she had all drawn into this, which was actually a presentation drawing to her. So it was trying to sort of capture her imagination about this is how you might live here, madam. And, 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 and there it is. Jeffrey Bauer and Ulrich Plesner, who was his partner at the time, arrived on the site with a plan for a manager's bungalow. And they discovered this lovely location with, with the boulders. Yes. And, and, and they decided, look, this just isn't work. It wasn't a house that you wanted to build. Um, let's just start putting sticks and strings together and literally what we have here is a record of what was built on site. I don't think we have found a single building, like a, a building drawing for it. This is the only The drawing. only record yes. is a record of what was, was built. It. And I think it's also interesting, when you look at this photograph you see how it's open and that's the opposite of what the colonial estate bungalow was, which was a fortress and closed Indeed. in. Indeed. And here it is totally part of the landscape. Yeah. We're looking at this idea of, you know, Jeffrey has studied architecture at a late age, at age 34, comes back at the age of 38 to Sri Lanka as an architect, filled with the, the innovation and the possibilities that were unlocked by the use of glass, the use of reinforced steel, that the industrial age had sort of unlocked across the world. Right. But then, by the 60s and certainly by the 70s, Sri Lanka's economy is closing and there isn't that availability of all these new materials. And building had, they had to find a way to keep that ethos of building with what was available and that's really what we're looking at against the climate. And Osaka, I think, is quite amazing because uh, I'm mean, here. I think you've tried to create this idea of what the pavilion might have felt. A like. whisper of that. Just a feeling. whisper, really. I mean, imagine these were two 30-foot-high glass boxes uh, with this extraordinary ceiling, full of what we would consider Wesak lanterns. But for the Japanese who were presented with it, would have been almost like this marvelous sort of undulating ceiling. And I remember the last the tile roof was on the Kashapa room right on top. And then he decided, that's it, no more. And you have this building which is entirely flat roofs with plants and gardens but and all. But it's amazing that someone, he was very mature in, this, in his career at this point, but he was still... Yeah, but what's extraordinary yes. about the man was he was never sure. He was, right? never, he was sure. never sure. And that, I think, is really the thing about most creative people. I mean, if yeah. you are sure, then things are fine. And but if you're not testing to the end. Exactly, and that's what he was doing right to the end. And now we come to this last bit, which is places yes. unbuilt. Yes. Idi no nu nirmana, it says. The places that only exist in the archive, because of course with any architecture practice, not everything gets built. But there are, because we've been looking at what happens between the place we have in our mind and then the place we make, and is the drawing a medium for that? And interestingly, the singular translation, it is a nirmana all the same. It is a, a 
something a creation. that is a, it's a creation. Oh. It is just an extraordinary drawing showing the possibilities of ideas. There's a bar at one end with potentially a beautiful batik background, stone columns, very Magnificent modern light fittings lights. that come out, some fantastic lights. And this idea that you could sit on the edge of a pool with a rock going down into it with water cascading from one of the... It's so full of ideas. Yes. And that's really what this archive is about, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. It's this incredible repository of ideas of one man's practice. Yes. But of course with so many other people. And all those ideas, I think that's really what's important about the archive, that all those ideas that come from so many different people have found a sort of repository in, in these this drawings. collection yes. uh, that, that, that the trust holds.